Okay, and now it's Purim 2018, which is 50... 778. 5778 <laughs> in Jewish calendar. And it's a very special Purim. It's a second time we are... Actually, it's a third time I'm in Israel for Purim. First time I never even knew that it was a... I didn't do anything. It was like 28 years ago. I was here, but I didn't go to shul, didn't listen to the view, I didn't know anything. But I wanted to. <laughs> uh, two years ago, we were here for Purim with our son. It was lovely. And now we're here. And I have a different feeling and I have a different uh, question. Which is a question I always had, but answer was given and I kind of accepted that this is the answer and, you know sometimes it happened there is a kind of a common sense answer question is why um, our sages tell us that during the messianic times all holidays will kind of fade away and only holiday which we're going to celebrate is going to be Purim it kind of gives you kind of bizarre thing like Purim, such a kind of not serious holiday at the first glance. And why only these holidays will stay with us during Messianic times? I asked my husband and uh, his answer was, he answered to me very clearly that it says because revelation going to be uh, in the world, everything going to be so bright that every small light which other holidays would bring to the to the world won't be needed there is a example said that if you need to recognize a friend in the dark the the, the candle or flashlight given to you and you can look at the face and you recognize a friend the another person not giving the flashlight or a candle and he need to recognize the friend by the way he speaks by the way he moves by the mannerism and it makes you into more person more carefully in tune and paying attention in the environment which is great great quality to be aware of your surroundings and understand what people around you do and it says that this was a life of jews in uh, in diaspora you know we were kicked out of land of, we didn't have a revelation in the temple, in the first temple. And now what you do, you have to find the little hints, you know, little here and there to understand that, oh, it was a God interference in our life. Oh, this is how Hashem planned it. And Purim is a perfect example of it. We have 12 years of history, and only looking back, Mordechai himself says, might be this is the reason you are Esther now in the, t in the palace in order to do this. He's guessing, like all of us guessing when there is no, you know, there is no revelation, when there is no clarity. And this is a question, why would we need Purim? First of all, as my husband explained to me, um, it's hard to believe that qualities which decreed by the Torah itself going to be uh, cancelled based on uh, you know human decision probably they're going to stay it's going to be just their original meaning and we know that the original meaning of holidays if you look into the into the torah they're all connected to the land all the holidays connected to the land connected to the cycle of uh, a spring and fall and harvest and the uh, planting they're all connected to real life of the nation in its land we didn't have it for a while our goal was actually with the temple being destroyed not to lose everything you know even oral Torah become a very much written, printed, you know, on everybody's shelf we have this, you know, while it was oral Torah. We, we find ourselves, the goal of last 2000 years was um, 
What is expression with uh, with different ways to try to gra grasp on to our tradition? You know, Shavuot instead of a you know harvesting holiday barley omer it become a cheesecake receiving of the torah you know because it's possible to, to make cheesecake in poland and talk about receiving of the torah but there is no way you can discuss uh, you know collecting barley and measuring it and counting it and having life with the glorious life which we can see had the inkling when you look at the book of ruth it describes with such a glorious time, you know, collecting the barley and everything blooming. During the time of the Omer. Yeah, during the time of the Omer. It wasn't right. said time. And we were told that it will become again time of Cholamayet between Pesach and Shavuos. Yes. <laughs> I think animals know something. They agree. You know. They're celebrating poor. They're celebrating <laughs> You should see the animal. She is incredible, um, and this is where all this comes to. Why should we? Why should Puri stay? And kind of a strange thought come came to me. Um, Germans, you know, Nazis, Nazis. Uh, the the name should be erased, but not forgotten <laughs> from the history they are they were very uh, pedantical you know and they were collecting jewish artifacts a torah scroll the jewelry the candlesticks the all these things connected with the rituals of uh, judaica life. judaica yeah <laughs> judaica why they were doing it not in order to melt it into the you know huge bricks of gold no it wasn't the gold it was a goal they were planning to create, you said in Prague, in Prague, museum of a culture of a former nation, nation which was, and they were working very hard to completely eradicate, erase, and they were doing it like real Amalekite, like real Agagite, Hamanite. <laughs> they were doing it against their own uh, benefit i'm a queen washti no no uh, listen <laughs> esther didn't have a good time neither <laughs> but at least we are benefit beneficiaries of what her sacrifice mm -hmm. Okay, and this is a, this is my point. My point is that they wanted to destroy us, but they wanted to remember that it was a nation like this, and it was a story. In a way, what's going to happen during the revelation of Mashiach? Everything going to be clear to everybody. And people have do have a tendency to forget everything in our life. Every Shabbos, we have a candle to remember and to keep Shabbos. Uh, Zachor, prote, prote, yeah, Zachor, Parsha Zachar constantly reminds us: don't forget what Amalek did to you, because we do have a tendency when it's a little bit better. I think they're building the gallows for Haman outside. <laughs> I can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when it's get a little bit better, we kind of say, no, it can't happen to us. No, people can't be so bad. You know, we have to make sure that we remember the situation what uh, described in Purim's story, when the girl, Jewish girl, could be grabbed and brought to the palace of the king, when women, Jewish and not Jews, perceived as a chattel, you know, judged by their beauty and as a sexual object it should never happen again and we should make sure that we remember it and work hard to change the world tikkun alam it's a jewish thing we should always remember when our life our safety should never depend on a whim and the will of some kind of a ruler be it a because he asked his wife what 
food you like, darling? This is during the second dinner. Yeah, it's the second dinner with the with the Haman and the Hashverosh. And her answer is my wish is my life. I beg of you to grant me and my nation life. It will never happen again. Baruch Hashem. It's on it's it is revealed now that we are capable as a nation not ask permission to defend ourselves. Even you can hear, oh, it shouldn't be done. Haman was telling uh, uh, Esther, I understand your point, you want to, uh, you know, but this is a rule, you know, Jews can be killed, you know, because there is a rule like this. And every nation had a rule, the Cherta Siedlisti, the pale, the... Pale of settlement. The pale of settlement. It was a rule. People have to obey this rule. It was a lot of very good rules. You know, Germany had a rule. Jews can teach, can whatever, can't own the property. It was a rule. We had to obey the rule. No more rules. We're not being ruled by any other nations. We have a country. We have an army. We have a dignity. And we will not ask anybody. We are asking. We have our own wealth. Our own economy now. We have our own economy. We don't have to be second person in the court. You don't have to be a Jew, court Jew, to be able to help him to amass wealth and maybe get something of yours, which always hated. I think this is what happened. This is why Purim have to be remembered and will stay as, as it is. Because, uh, you know, when I, I read Israeli's response to Purim's story, they say, it's disgusting. What kind of story? Somebody was writing that Jews of Hungary, they were one of the last were sent to concentration camp. A few months before it happened, they were celebrating Purim. It's a tremendous irony because we were always waiting. Now we know. Hashem tells us you have to go do it. You have everything. I gave you all this technology. Go and do it. Go what has to be done. And we will have a Purim story to remind us when it was at different times. Can I remind you of one thought? <clears throat> yeah. During the second, as you point out, the second meal with Haman, <clears throat> She begs for her life and the life of her people. And there are different times in the story where King Akashverosh asks Esther, what do you want? And he always couches it one way. But at the end of, <clears throat> at the, end of the story, maybe at the end of the exile, something very special is revealed. Because how does he address her after the destruction of the Amalekites by the, the Jews. There is no condition. He, he asked her, what would you like? There is no condition up to the half of the kingdom. He just terrified out of his wits, <laughs> you know. And her answer is, ah, we need to do some more killings. You know, <laughs> there's a few more needed to be done. And he said, whatever it is, you know. And God willing, we will see the revelation and we celebrate the Purim and we'll look back and we'll say, I can't believe it was, it was like this. But I will not forget that it was like this. Frele <laughs> Thank you very much.